Rub up your engines! Well, here we go. People can talk, people can argue, but for the 16th consecutive year in the United States, Toyota Tacoma is the best-selling small pickup because they last so long. They don't break down hardly at all. You can get various configurations, four-cylinder, V6, standard, automatic, four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. You got a lot of choices. Basically, it's because they can last forever. To give you an example, Toyota sold 2,000, 38,806 of them in 2009. And at the same time, they only sold 111,673 Tundras, the bigger version. Because the bigger version, of course, is going against the F-150 the biggest selling truck of all time. The Tacomas, their competition is the Rangers. Ford sells a lot less Rangers than Toyota sells Tacomas. Ford is the big truck. That's their whole thing. That's their money. Now, the Tundra's a really good big truck too, but Ford has that market. That's where Ford makes something like 92% of their profit on the F-150's line. The whole F lines makes Ford their profit, so they really push it out, the style and everything else. Tundra's are totally reliable, but they don't have all the bells and whistles that pickup truck guys want and all this stuff stylistic things that they go for. The Tacoma, which is a smaller pickup. Now, it's not as small as it used to be. My son's got an old one, and it was a little truck, and it was fine. It runs great. It's a bit small truck. Now, even the Tacomans, they call them small trucks, but they seem pretty big to me. They're the biggest selling for 16 years in a row in the United States because they've got that market of the small truck. The Rangers, they're okay, but they don't hold up like the Tacomas. I get customers with the Rangers. They got 140, 150, and they're falling apart, and the Tacomas are still running when they've got three, four, five. 500,000 miles on with the original engines and transmission. So they got their little niche and they're sticking to it with the Tacoma. Well, people are wondering about that 2022 Ford Maverick. It's not a car like the old Maverick. It's going to be a little bitty pickup truck. And as far as anybody can figure out so far, it's pretty much going to be a Ford Escape with a bed stuck on it. They're going to be making them in Mexico. And of course, they're not sure what's going to be in it, but the Ford Escape Hybrid has a 2.5 liter four cylinder. And there is that cheap Escape with the 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine. I'm assuming that the Maverick will just basically be a Ford Escape with a bed on top of it. And it may be that it could only tow 1,500 pounds if it's got the small engine. So, I mean, it's going to be a real small pickup truck. Now, the Escape starts at 24,850. Well, Ford's trying to say that they want a pickup truck that starts at 20 grand, which is what they were trying for in a Maverick, but it looks like it's going to be more expensive than that. Now, like I say, these things are going to be made in the assembly plant and Hermosillo, Mexico, which isn't known for quality. To give you an example, the latest Ford Escape had a predicted reliability of rating of one out of five from Consumer Reports. As I've always been saying, the quality in these Mexican factories isn't all that great. And they're going to begin building the Maverick down there. We got interested to see what comes out of it. They're trying to make a lower price truck, a little bitty truck. You start competing with the likes of Toyota Tacoma that are bulletproof, and you make a cheaper Ford version in Mexico, I don't know, with a three-cylinder engine in it. Believe it or not, this new three-cylinder engine that they have, it's going to have cylinder deactivation, so sometimes it can run on only two cylinders. Me, I see that as a recipe for disaster myself. Now, these straight cylinder engines, Ford's been using them for a while. They're international engines. They're made in Russia, China, and Romania. It's a European thing. The Europeans for ages have made three-cylinder engines because gasoline costs more. They're looking for the most economical thing. And if you remember, one of the biggest disasters sold in the United States was when they had the Geo Metro, and they had those three-cylinder engines, and they were just disaster areas. So, I'm not boding anything good towards the Ford Maverick if they're going to be putting this 1.5-liter three-cylinder engine with cylinder deactivation. So sometimes it can run on two. Sometimes they get a little carried away with their ideas. Make a small truck, put a little four-cylinder engine that's dependable. They should be going into this tinier engines, turbocharging, then deactivate the cylinders to have only two of the three working. I see that as a recipe for disaster, as I do make them in Mexico. I think that's a recipe for disaster, but only time will tell. A Cat 513 says they got a 2011 Chevy Silverado with low oil pressure. Okay, it's got 198,000 miles. 
miles. Now I read about that O-ring, so I dropped the pan, I replaced the O-ring on the oil pump, but it didn't improve. What do you think could be wrong? Well, I can tell you right now, your engine's just flat wearing out. You replaced that oil pump ring, and I'm sure you checked to make sure that the oil pump was working when you took it all apart. Maybe even put a new one in because you took the pan off anyways. As they age, metal parts wear. As they wear, there's more space. The oil pressure in your engine is pumped by a pump, and it's pumped through all these spaces. If something like your bearings get worn, metal parts get worn, the space the oil goes through gets bigger. Well, if you know anything about physics, if you pump something to a small hole, it'll have a certain amount of pressure. But if that hole all of a sudden becomes bigger, pressure's going to be lowered because now it's going through a bigger space and it's not compressed as much and you're going to lose pressure. So odds are, if you want to keep the vehicle, you're going to have to rebuild the engine because it's kind of foolhardy to guess, well, maybe it's the bearings, I'll change the rod bearings. No, when they're that worn, either rebuild the whole engine or get a new crate engine and install that. Now, if you don't want to spend any money yet, as long as it runs, what the heck? If you're going to replace the engine and not rebuild yours, who cares? Just keep driving it. If one day the engine blows, what do you care? Then you get a crate engine and put it in. As long as it runs, keep driving it. Now, if you're going to rebuild it, do it now. Don't wait, because then if it throws a rod and knocks a hole in the block, the block's useless. So if you're going to rebuild it, yeah, do it now. But if not, just keep driving it, and then you could just replace it with a new crate engine when it finally did go up. Simon Jester 753 says, I got a 2009 Subaru Impressed with an automatic tranny. I live in a city, and then I'm going to move to a rural area, and I want to pick up. But I'm not going to haul stuff heavy, just drywall, plywood, home appliances, stuff like that. I want to get an inexpensive truck. What about Chevy, Nissan, or Dodge Ram? I know you don't have much good to say, but if I'm only using it light, what do you think? If you're talking new, it's foolhardy, they're overpriced. You might as well as get a Toyota Tacoma and then drive it forever if you're talking new. But if you're talking used and you're talking about light duty use, on a Chevy Nissan Dodge Ram, there's nothing wrong with getting a Nissan Frontier used. Get one with a four-cylinder engine used, a lot cheaper, and they can still last quite some time. You could even maybe get a good price on a used Ford. You're not going to get a great price on an F-150. Everybody's nuts about them. But you could get a Ford Ranger used, and it could still be a decent vehicle if you're not putting a bunch of miles on it. But like I said, if you're going to buy a brand new one, you might as well just get a Tacoma, and then you never have to think about it for the next 30, 40 years. That's what my son did. I was trying to find him a used Tacoma, and he said, the heck with it. They're so expensive, even used, I'll buy a new one. And he'll probably have it for 30 years, and it'll still be running down the road. And it'll end up costing them like 800 bucks a year, so what does he care? If you're really going to keep it forever, and you're you're buying new, get a Tacoma. But if you're getting used, you want to save some money, light duty, there's nothing wrong with a Nissan or a Ford Ranger. Pastor Jim says, does Honda have the same problems with their variable cylinder management system like GM's active fuel management? Well, I haven't seen it yet. But you got to understand, Honda, they probably are the best engine manufacturer in the world. They make more four-stroke gasoline and diesel engines each year on this planet than any other company on the entire planet Earth. They have extremely good engineers at Honda. They have excellent engineers. Their system's 10 times better than General Motors is today as it stands. So I would expect Honda's engines not to have the problems that the GM management systems did because it's a much better company with much better engineers in it. They want to keep their clientele. They're not like an American company that the only thing they're worried about is their quarterly report for the stock for the next three months. And that's where they want to concentrate their stuff. Americans were pretty much the inventors of planned obsolescence in cars. The Japanese, they went the other way. They decided, we'll build them good, we'll have loyal customers, and we'll keep building them that way. I haven't seen a problem with Honda yet. Maybe they will. I don't know. I'll tell you if I do find it in the future. But I don't forecast them to have the problems that GM had, because they got better engineers and they build them better. Seven Beauty says, 300 degrees below incorporate in Illinois freezes engine blocks and components to 300 below zero to make the metal stronger and tighten tolerances. What do you think of that? Well, if somebody doesn't mind spending that kind of money, yes, it's not that bad of an idea. Now, let's say the engine blocks and components aren't that well made and they got that cold and they crack. Well, that meant those had failed. It's actually kind of a decent test. As long as you're using good parts, it will temper them. And if they don't crack, well, they better test them after they freeze them because then if they have the components, somebody puts them together, they find out they've got cracks and stuff. But if they went through the process and they succeeded, it's not that bad of an idea. Now, 
now you would never see that done on a large massive scale because they're making things cheaper and cheaper and you probably would end up cracking the heads especially the aluminum heads and stuff if you got them too cold and then heated them up but yeah if somebody wants to do it for high quality parts it's kind of an interesting idea I'm sure that guys that are making racing cars and stuff will be trying that out to see if it holds up over time I mean take an average dragster the average life of one of those engines is like 10.5 seconds and if they do that and they last long maybe they'll last 20 seconds and last twice as long if it does work I'm sure those guys will flock to that stuff so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell